feel incredibly fancy in my shirt today. I'm back with a new wardrobe review video and I'm looking forward to this one because it's about trainers and I feel like at the moment, well for the past year and a half, people's priorities when getting dressed is leaning more and more towards comfort at the moment. Mine certainly is. In between shuffling around the house in my Birkenstocks I spend most of my time in trainers so I feel like this is quite relevant uh, for people's dressing needs at the moment will hopefully be quite helpful. If you haven't watched one of these videos before it's basically me going through the entire contents of my wardrobe item by item so each video I pick a category and I go through all of the kind of core pieces within that category and review them honestly. Um, so far I've done coats, bags and black shoes I think that's the three that I've done. So this one is shoes again and it will follow the exact same format as the last one. I will start off by stating what the shoe is, how much it cost, how much I paid for it, or whether it was gifted. Uh, then I'll go on to size and comfort. Then I'll go into easing style, not easing style, styling with ease. Um, no, styling ease. Oh, can't get my words out. And that's when you get all the nice cutaways and nice visual part of the video and then I will go on to uh, longevity and the quality versus the price. I end each segment with the question, would I repurchase if lost or stolen? These videos tend to be quite long so I'm just going to quit with the chit chat intro and get started immediately. I'm going to start with a classic, the Superga 2750s. This is probably Superga's most recognised style. When I think of Superga I definitely think of these particular shoes. I've got them in two colours as you can see, I've got the original white canvas that retails at £55 and then I've got the off-white organic canvas that retails at £75. I bought this style back in August last year. I can't remember exactly when I bought these but it was definitely before these because I remember when I had these thinking I really wish Superga did these in an off-white. Lo and behold, not too long after, they brought out the organic collection and I was very excited because these are almost identical to a pair that they released in collaboration with Alexa Chung a couple of years ago. This beautiful low top beige pair that sold out really quickly and they never really restocked properly. I was always gutted that I didn't manage to get my hands on them. So when they released these I was very pleased because like I said they're virtually identical. Um, I'm actually going to pop one pair down because I can feel my arms are aching already. I'm a size 5 and found these fairly true to size. I wear a size 5 and EU38 in them. Comfort wise I think Supergas are a bit funny. They're very flat so if you require support with your insoles or you have a high arch you might find these a little bit uncomfortable. There is an insole inside but it pretty much offers little to no support. Uh, it's very thin, there's no padding. I don't particularly have flat feet or a high arch, I'm somewhere in the middle and when I'm wearing these I do feel like I'm walking on flat ground. It's quite a, an odd sensation and I can imagine wouldn't be comfortable for some people. I also think this bit, this is probably a really niche thing, this bit here feels a little bit too shallow and I don't know if that's because I maybe have longer toes than the average person. They fit and it's not like my toes are hitting the end but I think it's more the the bit with the laces feels like it's coming down too low so it can sometimes feel quite weird and maybe a little bit uncomfortable. If you've got short toes you probably won't have this problem whatsoever, it's just something I noticed and I was like it just feels like this little bit needs to be a little bit longer. However I do like Supergas because they fit the width of my feet perfectly. I have wide feet and I do struggle with shoes like Converse and more slim lined trainers so these are very good for the width of my feet. Um, so I'd say in general I find them comfortable but though some people might require a bit of a squidgy insole in them. The sole of them is extremely thick and at first it does feel like you can't quite bend your feet in them very well but once they're broken in that sole does become slightly more squidgier and flexible. In terms of styling I much prefer the off-white pair, I find them much easier to style. I like to wear the off-white pair with white jeans because they offset how bright white jeans can feel sometimes. I also like to wear them with navy tailored trousers, specifically my Sandro ones and my Ami ones. Again, I like the way the off-white kind of sits alongside navy, whereas the bright white pair, I have to admit, I find a little bit difficult to style sometimes because they are so bright white. And 
if I wear them with white jeans, it feels like there's too much white going on. And then if I wear them with something like na my navy trousers, I feel like there's a bit too much of a contrast. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like Superga's originated, well, originally were a tennis shoe or some sort of sports shoe. And when I wear these with navy, I do feel like I'm an off-duty tennis player or something. So I do reach for the off-white pair more often. But for the most part, Superga's are super easy to style. And I think that will be the general consensus with all of these trainers, they, because they're all of a similar nature. They're very easy to style. Um, I do like to wear them with a tailored trouser, uh, just because I like that juxtaposition of some tailoring with a battered pair of canvas trainers. Longevity, I'm just going to put another pair down again. Longevity and quality. So I've been wearing Supergas, I'd say, for 10 plus years. So I guess that's a testament to how much I like them and how good they are. However, within that 10 years, I have been through a lot of pairs because they are a canvas trainer at the end of the day and the canvas does wear through. And the place that I notice they wear through the quickest is on the toe because the vulcanized sole doesn't quite overlap the canvas where you're big toe hits. Now this might just be due to my, I might have an extra large big toe, it might be the way I walk, but I find it doesn't take long for my toe to start rubbing through the canvas and then I get a hole. And I do patch it up and I sew it up, but eventually my toe just comes back through. Uh, um, so that, in terms of the quality, is the only real issue I found with Supergas. Supergas have a bit of a reinforced heel. It's not you know, massively stiff or anything, but there is more, um, there is like a thicker bit stitched on to the inside of the shoe to make this more durable. I find that when your foot is continuously going in and out, in and out, the back gets really worn quite quickly. And then the sort of, it's not plastic, it's just a reinforced bit in here starts to wear through. But I feel like these are all issues that maybe are inevitable with a canvas trainer. I've not had any problems with the sole. I've not really had any problems with cracking. I should have really grabbed, I've got a really battered pair that I've had for years and years and years. I think I've had them for six or seven years and they're still going strong. They have holes in them, but the sole is still perfectly intact. So I think it's hard to judge because these are from the organic collection and they are more expensive than the, um, £55 regular pair. So at the moment, I feel like I can't give these a proper judgment based on their price and the quality. The £55 pair though, the original regular canvas, I do think is very reflective of the price. I do think the quality is there with them um, and there's a reason why they're such a classic and they've been around for so long. This pair, £20 extra because they're organic. I know that it costs more to make things more ethically, more sustainable, you know, you have to pay um, a fair wage and all that. I'd be interested to see if that price increase um, kind of reflects on quality as well. It'd be interesting. Um, they, does, they do feel thicker. They definitely feel slightly thicker than the original canvas, um, but it's hard to judge just yet. Would I repurchase if lost or stolen? I would definitely repurchase the off-white pair. The white ones, I'd take it or leave it. Um, it kind of depends what mood I'm in. I've been in through so many different colours of Supergas. So um, for the most part, though, I would repurchase my Supergas. Next, I have the Muji water repellent trainers. I apologise. These are really gross. I didn't clean them before shooting this video. So I will spare you the soles of these trainers. These I purchased in June of 2019 and they were 19 .95. Bought them in a, a Muji store somewhere, but they are available online most of the year. Size wise, they follow the Japanese sizing, so they are in centimeters. And whenever I feature these trainers, the most common question is, How did you work out what size? I do think there is a size chart on Muji, um, but you could just Google Japanese size chart. I wear, I think it's a 24 centimeters. Is it? Can I see? Yes, it is. So if you're size five, 24 centimeters seems to be the correct size for me. Uh, comfort wise, these are so, so different to the Superga. There's almost like an ergonomic, ergonomic, not ergonomic, sole inside. Um, it's very padded, especially around the arch area. Maybe a little bit too padded for me. Does feel a little bit weird at first because it's almost like 
the sort of padding you get in like a really tech sport trainer, but this is just a plimp sole. Um, you can remove that sole if it is a bit too much for you, but it's just important to I guess, mention that there is a lot of support with inside these trainers considering they are just plimp soles. Comfort wise, everything else completely fine, I'd say. They, again, they're not too narrow for me. They're probably the similar width to the Supergas um, and have not had any issues anywhere with them, really. Styling wise, I did have that initial problem of, oh, they're bright white trainers again. I, I can't quite style them, but look at them now. They're very battered. I mean, it's probably, some of you are probably watching thinking that's not battered, but for me, this is like, I'm desperate to, to wash them. I can't stand them looking like this. I wore them a lot in the summer with shorts and little white socks and, um, they they have a very nostalgic feel to them, which I think is what drew me to them. I You'll notice a pattern that I tend to veer away from any trainers that have branding on them unless they are like my running trainers or extremely sporty trainers. But day-to-day -day trainers, I stay away from branding. Um, and when I saw these, they made me think of the sort of trainers that I would have worn in PE back in high school. So I, I guess I kind of style them in that kind of way, like with little white socks and like uh, some cut off Levi's and just in a much more relaxed style. But again, they do work really well with tailored trousers. I wore them quite a lot with my Ami trousers, I think last year, but yeah, all round a very easy to style trainer. Longevity and quality versus price. Well, they're 19.95. And they've held up really, really well, considering they've taken quite a beating and have just been worn so much. So I actually think the quality of them is really good, considering the price. The canvas, I'd say, is no thinner than the Superga canvas. I actually think the, the toe on these is better than, say, like the Superga's, because I don't have the problem of maybe my, my toes potentially coming through the canvas because the rubber comes completely over the toe. Muji also lists these as water repellent. I can't remember any specific instances where I've worn them in the rain, so I can't quite comment on that. But I imagine there's a coating on them that just means that if there was a shower, your feet wouldn't get completely drenched. I haven't had any issues with cracking, um, splitting or anything like that. I would say, yeah, for, for 20 pounds, Good, very good. Longevity, I mean, I've had them, like I said, since 2019 and will continue to wear them. So yeah, I think a really good quality trainer if you're looking for something on a smaller budget. Would I repurchase if lost or stolen? Yes, based on how much I've worn these and how comfortable I found them, I would definitely repurchase. Next I have the Studio Nicholson and Moonstar collaboration trainers. I've got them in two colours as you can see. I promise they are two different colours, although on the viewfinder they look very similar. Don't ask me why I have two colours that are almost identical, it's just the way I am. This is the cream version and this is the dove version. I got the cream back in August 2017 and I got the dove in November 2018. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for them when I first purchased them, but they currently retail at £135, and I can't imagine there would have been much price inflation on these. I'm just going to pop down a pair because I can feel my arms aching again. Size-wise, these are a unisex style, so they do recommend going down one whole size. They follow the same Japanese system of centimetres, so I'm wearing a 23, which equals to a size 4, and they fit me perfectly. A 5 would definitely be too big, so the advice of sizing down at least one size, yeah, I would recommend following that advice. Comfort wise, um, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of information firstly about Moonstar and these shoes, just to, I don't know, give a little bit of context. So these shoes are manufactured by a brand called Moonstar, which is a Japanese shoe brand that have been making shoes since, I think, 1873 I read, which is an incredibly long time to be making shoes. Each pair of these is handmade and then fired in a kiln. Now, I can't remember the all the technical bits of it, but that so the sole is vulcanized, so it's all um, attached, you know, like it's all one piece of sort of like molded rubber together. And by putting them in a kiln, 
the sulfur within the rubber, there's some sort of reaction that happens and it does something to the raw state of the rubber so then when they come out of the kiln they're very very flexible. Whatever happens in the kiln it basically makes the rubber very very flexible. So straight out of the box these shoes are really flexible. I just wanted to note that for two reasons because number one these shoes aren't made by Studio Nicholson it's a collaboration between the two brands and I think what they've done is Studio Nicholson have made these colorways with Moonstar so the colorways that you see on the Studio Nicholson website are exclusive to them you can't really get them anywhere else. Secondly I wanted to tell you that little story just to highlight the comfort of these shoes because let's just take the Superga which I have here I had to really really push to get it to bend like that whereas these I mean virtually no pressure for them to do that and like I said they're like that as soon as you put them on so they're comfortable immediately which I thought was really interesting um, and I'm not sure if all brands that use that create vulcanized soles do that sort of baking process in a kiln to make them that flexible but it makes a massive massive difference and I do think these shoes are extremely comfortable they are slightly slim as you can see but because of how flexible they are normally with shoes like this they would rub on my little toe but I feel like they've really molded to my feet and I've not experienced any rubbing when I'm walking along on the sides here they are quite flat I mean they have a more supportive sole than the Superga's but it's not hugely supportive so that's something to bear in mind as well you might need to just pop a bit more of a spongy sole inside them but yes aside from that I find them extremely extremely comfortable styling wise so it's kind of like a bit of a similar situation to the Superga's in that I now reach for the Dove way more than I reach for the cream when I bought these back in 2017 I wore them everywhere with everything to death they were like my trainers that I just my go-to for so long and they were they're easy to style because they're not bright white they're still cream I know they look a lot brighter against these but they are a, a, they're a cream color still this is more of a subdued color and when I had these I was never thinking to myself oh I want another color or I want another version of this cream it just so happened that when the dove came out I was like oh they're quite a nice unusual subtle color and then once I had the dove it was like a shiny new best friend and then the cream got very neglected so yeah the dove tends to be the pair that I wear a lot now and just like the previous pairs and this is going to be the same story each time I do love to wear them with navy trousers and I actually like to wear these with like a full navy look including navy socks if you're a fan of Studio Nicholson you'll kind of know the the typical Studio Nicholson silhouette of like big baggy trousers they do look awesome with a pair of big baggy trousers I've got some nice big white um, Margaret Howell ones that I got last summer that I think these look really cool with um, I just think because they are slightly unusual and they look a little bit different to your regular trainer they're a very nice point of interest with minimal styles longevity wise sorry I'm just going to grab the cream pair again actually longevity wise I'll look at the cream pair because I've worn them so much more and wore them just for so long you can see that they are still in really good condition there is no splitting on the rubber there's no cracks the glue hasn't leaked or anything like that there's no holes in the canvas which I think is the beauty of this bit here the only bit of wear and tear is the back bit here as you can see from where I'm putting my foot in and taking it back out again and I honestly just think with trainers they can't stay in pristine condition forever no matter how hard I try so wear and tear is inevitable but for so little wear and tear to appear on a pair of trainers considering how much I've worn them I think is a very good reflection of the price I wouldn't expect anything less though with Studio Nicholson because I think as a brand everything is such a beautiful quality but for £135 I, I expect big things you know I expect a, a well crafted pair of trainers and I do truly think these are a very well crafted pair of trainers would I repurchase if lost or stolen? Yes, 100%. I absolutely love these trainers. They're possibly my favourite trainers within my collection. Definitely my favourite style. And also, the sizes tend to sell out quite quickly and then they're not restocked for quite a while. I think, I'm guessing that's because everything has to be handmade and then they have to wait for the shipment to come back in. So, 
I'd be very gutted if I didn't have them anymore because I just I'd know I'd have to probably wait ages to get them again so yeah I would repurchase in a heartbeat next I have the Vans Authentic no Vans Vault Authentic LX I bought these in July last year from Netta Porte for £60 I feel like Net is really good for finding those trainers that are reissues or limited styles or just slightly unusual styles. Size wise, um, true to size, I, I'm pretty sure I'm wearing a size 5 in these. Yes I am. Comfort, it's a little bit hard to say at the moment because honestly I haven't worn them a lot. I think I wore them maybe five times last year which was, isn't really enough to sort of properly break them in. The sole however does feel extremely thick I imagine because vans are predominantly a skate shoe really aren't they, they do have to be quite good quality but I can't comment too much on the comfort just yet. Um, they, feel, they feel quite flat, I mean they're wide which is great for my wide feet. Something I did notice, um, which I know is because this is the style of authentics, this is just how they are, this bit here is that called the vamp? I know it's called a vamp when you're talking about ballet flats and shoes like that. I don't know if it's the same with trainers. It's qu quite low. Can you see the opening is rather large? So the trainers don't, the, sorry, not the trainers, the laces don't come up that high in comparison to the other shoes I've just shown you. And that felt weird to me. And I think that felt weird because I was so used to laces coming up right up to my ankle. So there's a lot of upper foot on show when you wear these, which if you're not used to, it's a little bit bizarre and it does feel a little bit weird walking in them, styling. Something that drew me to these trainers was the very nostalgic feel that I got from them in a similar way that the Moody trainers feel a bit nostalgic. These remind me of something that maybe would have been worn in the 90s or maybe something that Jude Law would have worn in Talented Mr Ripley. You know, that kind of vibe of uh, loose white slacks on a boat uh, sailing the coast of Italy, you know, that kind of vibe. So when I'm styling them, there are times where I've tried to replicate that. You know, some big baggy white jeans and a navy jumper has been my preferred way to wear them. But as I said, I've not worn them much, so it's been really difficult to comment on the styling of them. They are, they're probably not showing up on camera, but they've definitely got a, a much more of a yellow tone in them versus the other trainers, which are all true sort of creams and whites, which I do wonder will be a bit of a... Not a problem but um, something that I need to just sort of play around with in my wardrobe so maybe next summer is when I really they really come into their own but at the moment I feel quite limited with them longevity and quality versus price for 60 pounds when I compare them to say Superga's at 55 I do think they are quite a good quality shoe and I think because they are a skate shoe predominantly like Vans I know are very popular in skateboarding I guess they do have to be a good quality shoe. I have heard that the grip on Vans is very good. However, that issue of my toe coming through the canvas, is that going to happen again? Possibly. And again, with the sort of reinforced bit here, is that going to start wearing through? Who knows? It's, it's hard to tell. But the sole on them feels really quite weighty and good quality. The canvas uh, is standard weight it's not thin it's not thick yeah sorry not the best review of these and would I repurchase lost or stolen in the headspace that I'm in right now with them probably not just because they weren't overly worn last summer com in comparison to the rest of my trainers which I think is always quite a, a clear judgment of um, whether you truly like want something or love something so as it stands, no, but maybe come back to me in the summer when I've really tried styling them and worn them in a bit more, my opinion might have changed. Next I have the Nike Mid Blazer 77s are these. So these were gifted to me back in, uh, I think it was August last year, as part of a collaboration with Nike. I must remember to say Nike, not Nike. But they retail at 89 now, size-wise, I've actually got a five and a half, so um, maybe they do run slightly small. Comfort-wise, I have to say, they are uncomfortable. Um, you, well, this might not be applicable to everyone, but 
I have to unlace them really far down to get my feet in and out, which I find really infuriating because I just want to be able to get my feet in and out quite easily. Do I have to take out half the laces each time? So that's the number one discomfort. The second is the, the trainers come up just above the ankle. This bit here is so uncomfortable. It's quite solid, it's very stiff, and it rubs loads, but also it digs in. And I eventually, after wearing these, actually had almost like a burn mark along where they'd been rubbing. It was so painful. And with things like that, I get a bit annoyed because I just think, I can't be bothered to break these in. It's a pair of trainers. They should be comfortable from the get-go. However, these are leather, so it's quite different to the canvas trainers that I've been speaking about previously, which are a lot softer already. These do require breaking in, and there is the, the leather is quite stiff, especially around the ankle, and it's quite padded, so it will take quite a bit of time for that to really soften up. But my first impressions is, is that they were quite uncomfortable, unfortunately. Styling-wise, I was surprised at how well I could make, like integrate these into my wardrobe. There was part of me that was very apprehensive as to whether I could wear these. I just thought these feel far too out of my comfort zone. But actually when I break it down and I look at them and think, right, they're a white pair of high top trainers. They're slightly different to what you're used to, but the kind of main sort of, the, the basics of them is nothing that you're not actually that used to. Um, don't know if that was a load of old waffle that I just said. And I actually think they look great with long dresses. They look really cool with like slouchy denim. They're obviously easy to wear in that sort of street style way, but surprisingly can be worn in a more minimal sense quite easily as well. When I did the paid promotion with them, I wore them with a really nice long black dress, very sort of Lily Allen-esque, and I was into it. I did enjoy it quite a lot, but due to the discomfort that I've had when wearing them I just haven't reached for them that much so styling wise it's hard to comment because they just don't come out of the wardrobe as often as I would like. Longevity and quality versus price. I do think they are a very good quality shoe, they, the leather feels like good quality, the sole feels like good quality, I think you're getting a well constructed shoe here that will last you a long time and will age very very nicely but sadly just due to my impatience with breaking them in, I haven't worn them a lot, so it's hard to kind of judge. But I think it's very obvious that I wouldn't repurchase if lost or sold, and unfortunately, just because I just didn't wear them enough. Next, I have a pair of trainers that still live in their dust bag, believe it or not. They are the Common Projects. Are these called the Achilles? Yeah, Achilles trainers. I cannot for the life of me remember how much I paid for these. I tried to have a look for a receipt within my email. I can't even remember where I bought them from. It was that long ago. I've had these since August 2017. At the moment, they retail between £320 and £290. I know that there has been a price increase on these year after year after year. So there is... I feel like I paid 240 or 260 for them, but like I said, some places are now charging over 300 pounds for them. Size and comfort. Um, I actually don't know what size these are. I cannot see the size in them anywhere. It has either worn off or it was never inside there. So that's really unhelpful and I do apologize. Comfort wise, they're all right. I mean, they're a leather trainer, so they require some breaking in. I do remember getting blisters on the back of my feet from them because the back is very, very stiff. And this is a bit of a weird one, but I find them a bit slippy inside. I feel like with socks on, my feet were sort of slipping and sliding all over the place, even though they do fit. I guess because they're all entirely leather inside as well. So it just, it, they just feel a bit weird, a bit of a sort of slippery trainer. And I don't know if you can hear they're quite squeaky. Um, I'll talk about that when I go on to the quality of them. But overall, like, yeah, they're a comfortable trainer. There's, there's, they're nothing to sort of like really rave about, but the discomfort wasn't, the, you know, there wasn't massive amounts of discomfort either. Styling wise, um, they're a very basic trainer. They're very plain. They have a tiny bit of branding here. But aside from that, there is nothing on them. I'd say that they're the most minimal trainer I own. I feel like the Muji ones have got more personality than these. Um, so relatively easy to style, um, 
much of a muchness really it's the same as you've as I've said and as you've seen so far in the video overall I don't have much to say about them sometimes there are some things that I just think are so minimal that they are kind of a bit boring in terms of longevity and the quality versus price so they are obviously an expensive trainer and this is where I have a bit of a gripe with charging this much for trainers is they they're good quality but I just don't think they're worth that price they I must admit there's not been any huge amounts of wear and tear on them they're still in quite good condition they just need a bit of a clean up and they need new laces the laces are very thin I actually think this one's going to snap soon but there's no huge red flags no huge flaws for me however for that price they don't feel like this really luxury trainer and that's where I'm like surely there's a limit because how luxury can you make a trainer feel and I do wonder whether Common Projects are pushing it a little bit too far by charging over £300 for a pair of trainers. So I have to be honest and say I don't think they're worth the price. They're a very good pair of trainers and if you can get them on sale for cheaper or if you can buy them secondhand or something, yeah, sure, go for it. But buying them brand new, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Eventually I just fell out of love with these trainers and that is why I wouldn't recommend them so much is because for me... There was just something maybe a little bit too boring about them. I'm not sure, I can't put my finger on it, but I fell out of love with them and I don't think they live up to the hype personally for me. But I did wear them a lot, they were comfortable, they do look cool, so pros and cons. That's it for white trainers. I'm now going to speak about three pairs of non-white trainers. The first being these black Converse 70s. These retail between 70 and 80 pounds. I unfortunately don't have a recollection of how much I paid for these or when I even bought them. I just know it was at some point last year, so I do apologise for that. Sizing, I think, is a little on the larger side because I have these in a four and a half. I don't know if that's um, generally how Converse are, but I feel like the 70s definitely run slightly larger than usual. Comfort, I have to be honest, these are so uncomfortable and I think that is a reflection of my wide feet and how slim these trainers are. They're just too slim for my feet. They rub all along the side. They pinch at my toes. They just don't work for me. I've tried time and time again to break them in and make them work, so to speak, and it's just not happening. The sole of them, like inside, does feel quite padded and cushioned, so I don't think they are an uncomfortable shoe if they work for your feet but sadly they don't work for my feet. Styling has also been a little bit of an issue. Um, I think I liked the idea of black converse but the reality is is that I'm such a, a white trainer or a more of a lighter coloured trainer person. When I think of converse I'm always thinking oh, how cool they look on like the Strokes and the Ramones and I just think they look awesome but the reality is, is on me I don't feel quite right in them. Um, they actually do work with a lot of things in my wardrobe, but it's more to do with me not feeling that comfortable or that confident in them. And I do put it down to the fact that they are black and it's just not something that I'm used to. But in general, I do think Converse are like fun. They're, they're easy to style. I always think they look awesome with like Levi's 501s. They always look really cool with big floaty dresses. Um, and of course they look lovely with, with a pair of slim tailored trousers. So don't be put off by the fact that I couldn't make them work for me. I do think Converse look awesome. They just didn't feel quite right for me. Longevity and quality versus price. Now the 70s style is slightly different from the regular Converse. This sole is off-white and it's also slightly chunkier. I'm also wondering if the canvas is slightly different. I'm not sure. I don't have a pair of regular Converse to compare them to. They, I think they're more expensive than regular Converse as well. I probably should have checked the price of regular Converse, but I'm assuming that 70s are slightly more expensive. For the price of £80, I am a bit like, mm, is that a little much for the quality of the shoe? Especially when you compare the Nike blazers which are £89.95 and they're a full weather trainer that are, feel much more high quality and much more sturdy whereas these are in reality just a canvas trainer so 
I do think they're a little bit expensive for what they are. The sole does feel like really good quality though, and the canvas is very nice and thick. I mean, the 70s might not do this, but the they wear down quite quickly, and the white on the edges here can come off quite easily. That might have changed, but I just remember from having regular Converse how quickly that would wear down. So I'm in two minds about Converse and the price. They're so iconic. Um, and for good reason, but I'm just not sure if the price is fully reflective of the quality, especially in the case of the 70s. Would I repurchase if lost or stolen? I think the answer is obvious there, isn't it? No, sadly not. Next, I have the New Balance 990 V4s. I bought these back in December 2018, and I think I paid £175 for them. I bought them in Melbourne, and I can't remember what the exchange rate was at the time. You know, I've got no idea. But I think I paid roughly 175 and I got them from a women's sneaker store. I can't remember the name of the store, which is quite annoying, but it was very nice, very minimally decorated and painted in a light pink colour. Sizing with New Balance, I think, in general, is a little bit on the larger side. All New Balance trainers I've had, I've had to size down a half a size. These are a four and a half. Comfort-wise, these are so, so, so incredibly uncomfortable. You can see there is a lot of padding going on there. There's a lot of bells and whistles, there's a lot of spongy bits, there's all sorts. And it all makes for a very, very comfortable trainer. I've had no issues with the comfort whatsoever. I have had issues though with styling. Um, these are obviously very different to all of the trainers that I've shown so far. And I think the reason I bought these was because I got a bit sucked in by the hype of them. They've become, they originally were a running trainer, they've become a very, very popular fashion trainer. I, I mean, even now, however many years on, they are still so, so popular on Instagram and such. And at the time I was kept seeing them everywhere and just thought, I think I want a pair. Not realising how hard it was to get hold of these. These are the V4s. I run in the V5s, which is the latest version of these. I don't actually know if you can buy V4s anymore. They haven't been restocked in women's sizes, especially for a long, long time. And back then they were, they were quite rare. So I think a lot of it was the thrill of the chase that got me wanting these. I was like, I'm gonna hunt down a pair, I will. And I did hunt down a pair and then was a bit like, oh, I don't think they're really for me. <laughs> They're of a very particular aesthetic, aren't they? That chunky dad trainer. And I made them work with lots of dresses while I was in Melbourne and used them as a lot as a walking trainer with shorts. But that was as far as it went, really. I didn't continue wearing them much. I've worn them a few times with, you know, tailored trousers, sometimes with jeans. But every time I put them on, I just don't feel like myself. And I think you can try and try and try and make something work but ultimately, if you don't feel confident in it, or you don't feel like yourself, that will shine through and it will get the better of you. And it certainly got the better of me with the New Balances. But I have to say, the quality of them, I do think is amazing. You have to remember that these were, well, they are a running trainer, hence the rather high price of them. Um, so when you, if you think of them from a running standpoint of view, which is kind of how I think of them because I've been running in the V5s for so long, I think they are a really, really durable trainer that do last a long time. I've been running in the V5s for over a year and although they look absolutely, like they look like they've been through hell and back, <laughs> they still perform. The only downside is, is that the most part of the trainer is suede, which I think... I just don't get along with suede very well. I find it it requires quite a lot of upkeep if you want it to look nice all the time. So that would be my only downfall of, I guess, the construction of the trainer. Would I repurchase if lost or stolen? Yes, in a running sense, because I run in them. From a fashion point of view, no. I could quite happily live without these trainers in my wardrobe. And last but not least, I have the Nike day breaks. These retail between, what have I written down here? 80 to 90 pounds. However, I paid 60 for these because I found them on sale through a women's sneaker store called Pam Pam that's based in East London. 
I bought them in October, was it October? Yeah, October last year, because I saw Alexa Chung wearing them. And although mine and her style is very, very different, I do think she has a knack for um, wearing some quite unique pieces. She always has really good shoes. And I saw her wearing these with a pair of navy tailored trousers. Surprise, surprise. And they immediately piqued my interest. I liked the, I just liked the way they looked. They weren't like anything I had or anything I'd seen. And I was like, hmm, I think I might give those a try. Sizing, I have them in a five and a half, which makes me think that Nike trainers come up a little bit small because the Nike mid blazers I have are also a five and a half. These are so comfortable, so, so, so comfortable. They are extremely lightweight. They're probably the lightest shoes out of all of the shoes I've featured here today. Literally as light as a feather. This blue part of the trainer is like a semi-opaque mesh and then the rest of the trainer is suede. So there is not a lot weighing the trainer down and there's not lots going on here. So they're extremely comfortable to wear and they feel very lightweight on the foot, which I think is very, very nice. I've not had any problems with them whatsoever. 10 out of 10 for comfort. Also 10 out of 10 for styling. They're really fun to style because they're so different to what I've shown you here. And I know the New Balance 990s are different, but they are different in this, in that sort of dad trainer way. I feel like with these, they still feel quite sleek and chic. Maybe that's what drew me to them because I've managed to pair them with a lot of things in my wardrobe in that sense in that sort of Phoebe Philo kind of way, you know how she wears lots of nice oversized tailoring with her Stan Smiths. So I've kind of been doing that with these trainers. Because I bought them in October though, I haven't really managed to play around with them much with any summer styles. I've got that big baggy pair of white Margaret Hall trousers, which I think these might look quite cool with, and a vest. Um, I might actually pop that in a cutaway now to see if it looks cool. So it'll be interesting to see how I make these work in the summer. In terms of longevity, hard to say because I haven't had, had them for that long. There is a lot of suede on there, so again, there's that upkeep of the suede. Suede tends to look quite tired very, very quickly. It's a light coloured suede, so it's going to look dirty quite quickly. I do, I do have high hopes that they will last a long time if I kind of keep them in good condition. 80 to 90 pounds though, I'm not so sure. I didn't mind paying 60 pounds for these, but I think getting too close to the £100 mark, I'm like, I don't know. There's not really much there to, to justify such a high price tag. So I'd recommend looking for them on sale because I think if you paid £90 for these, you'd be a little bit disappointed. And would I repurchase if lost or stolen? Yes, definitely, because I've really, really enjoyed how refreshing these have felt within my wardrobe don't get me wrong i absolutely love white trainers and i love the collection of white trainers i have but sometimes it can get monotonous you know that's the reality of it and these have been quite refreshing to i guess add a little something to outfits that i felt has been missing without having to clothes shop or anything like that but yeah i would definitely repurchase because i love what they've added to my wardrobe and that concludes this wardrobe review. I hope you've enjoyed this one. I quite enjoyed putting this one together, although I feel like the comments on every single pair of trainers was really similar. I hope it's been useful, especially for those of you who may be considering purchasing some of the trainers that I've mentioned today. As always, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave them and I will answer as best as I can. And I'll obviously leave as many links for the trainers as I can in the description box. But if there isn't a link, it normally means that they are out of stock or no longer available. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you all in the next video.